Across the globe, sushi and sashimi have become increasingly popular seafood items. Nowadays, sushi restaurants can be found just about anywhere from the coast to the mountains. Sushi and sashimi are usually considered healthy seafood choices because it has a high amount of protein and is usually eaten in small quantities. The practice of eating sushi dates back to the 1400s when making sashimi was reserved only to samurais. The word sashimi in Japanese actually means pierced meat and is thought to originate from the practice of spiking the brain just after fish capture, a process known as ikejime. This paralyzes the fish and keeps the meat from being bruised and prevents lactic acid from building up. This guarantees that the meat has the best possible taste and quality and allows the fish to last days without turning white. This proud tradition has been passed on to fishers around the world and is now being taught in Micronesia through PMK Fish Market, US NOAA, and the Canadian Fund for Local Initiatives. The following video demonstrates the historical Japanese process of ikejime and onboard handling of sashimi grade tuna. The video also demonstrates loining and storage practices that ensure that the sashimi supplied to restaurants is the highest quality. Fishers trained in using this method can and should demand a higher price for their fish since it is a higher quality product. For the best sashimi grade tuna, capture is done by handline, either through offshore trolling or through other horizontal handline fishing like dropstone, which takes the fish from nearby reefs or seamounts. Either method is acceptable. However, the quicker the fish is brought on board and killed, the less time lactic acid has to build up in the muscles. Once the fish is brought alongside the boat, the fish is usually gaffed to prevent loss, brought over the side and immediately spiked using the ikejime process. Once the brain is spiked, the fisher can use a tuna line or wire to further paralyze the fish. The wire is run through the spine and the fish becomes completely paralyzed. This not only prevents lactic acid buildup, but also prevents the fish from thrashing about the boat which bruises the meat and reduces the quality. After the fish is paralyzed, the fisher cuts deep into the body just behind the fins to bleed the fish. This practice also reduces lactic acid and makes the best quality sashimi. The next step is to gut the fish, remove the gills and brush gill cavity to remove any blood or leftover pieces of the gill before placing the fish in ice. For sashimi grey tuna, the best practice is to pack the belly with ice to keep the fish uniformly cold with ice covering the whole fish. Like other fish, tuna begins to go bad when exposed to high temperatures and sun which promotes bacteria, so icing should start immediately once the fish has been properly processed. All water should be kept drained from the cooler to keep the meat from absorbing water that turns the meat white and changes its natural flavor. Once the fish is taken to market, the market staff should inspect the fish to make sure the meat is not bruised, that the fish doesn't show signs of being left in the sun, that it's been spiked, bled and brushed, and that the temperature is around 40 degrees. Experienced staff can tell if the fish has been improperly handled. Once these steps are taken, the fish is weighed and ready for processing into tuna loins. Tuna loins are how restaurants expect to receive sashimi grade tuna. Loins can be sold with the skin on or skin off. PMK Fish Market removes the skin prior to loining. The loins are removed by cutting the fish just behind the fins where the fish was bled on board. The fish should be cut as close along the head as possible to get the most meat. Cuts are then made along the top and bottom of the fish along the center bones to separate the meat. Another cut is then made down the side of the fish to divide the loins into two sections per side. 
Once the loins are separated, the dark meat gets trimmed off along with as much of the tough tendons as possible. The scraps, bones and head can be used for soups or other purposes. The final loin is then ready to use for making sashimi. For market display and storage, vacuum bags are one of the best options to ensure the meat stays as fresh as possible prior to use.